Hi there, this is Ranjit from TechTubeBuzz.com and welcome to the 23rd Q&A session where I'll answer some of your tech related questions. Again, I've got a bunch of questions with me. So let's get away with this Q&A. And the first question I get is from Isbeth47 and he asked me, Hi, love your videos. Thank you. I have a question about Media Home Center. I have a Philips 5000 Media Center connected to my television. I have a Twonky uh, server on my computer and the router is a Asus Dark Knight. When I try to watch 1080p uh, resolution movies wirelessly from my computers, the video is laggy. Is the Philips 5000 not strong enough? Or is there some setting in the dark night that I have missed? Thank you. Uh, is but to be very frank, I have no idea about this Philips 5000 uh, player. Is it a media player that you connect to a television or what? Uh, regarding your 1080p video uh, being a little bit, uh, what do you say, uh, not very smooth to watch, what I would say is that copy that content from your PC, that's the 1080p content and connect it directly to this uh, Philips 5000 media player and see if it can play it back properly. If then also it's a bit choppy, then the problem is with the Philips 5000 player, it doesn't have the right codex or it's simply not powerful enough for it to play back. The other thing is that if uh, it plays fine then, then that means uh, the transport layer that is your Wi-Fi is a little bit congested um, but luckily as you're using the Asus Dark Knight router, this is a dual band router, I would suggest that you move from the 2.4 gigahertz to the 5 gigahertz for video streaming and I, I think so uh, when you move from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz then the video streaming will be a lot more smoother. I hope this answers your question. The next question comes from Nabeen Sundar Nayak and this is a classic question that I'm getting a lot these days. What is Android routing? What are the benefits of routing? If routing process fails, uh, then what is the damage to the phone or is there anything else that we can do? Uh, Nabeen, first let me talk about Android routing. What is Android routing? When you purchased an Android phone, for example, let's say from Samsung or HTC, and if you notice Samsung and HTC, the layout is a lot different. For example, Samsung uses the, what do you say, touch with UI layer in which from which you interact with the phone. Similarly, HTC uses the Sense UI. And also, if you notice these manufacturers, do load a bunch of applications that you might need or might not need and simply speaking if you have a budget oriented phone uh, already uh, these phones are limited on storage etc and you might want to delete these extra apps you can't do that and by routing what you do is you take complete control over your phone and once your phone is routed you can do whatever you want with the phone for example you can remove that complete sense ui if you want or the touch was ui if you want replace apps etc remove unnecessarily apps so by routing you take complete control over the phone and you can install whatever you like also routing is helpful for people whose phones are stuck with old versions of Android. For example, let's say you have a perfectly functional Android phone, but the manufacturer is simply not upgrading, let's say from ICS2, let's say 4.1 Jelly Bean or etc. If your phone is rooted and a developer has released a ROM with 4.1, you can just install that ROM and now you can get the 4.1 update. But again, uh, by routing the phone you have opened up your phone now and you can do whatever you want with the phone it's a powerful thing also and at the same time it's also a dangerous thing if you know what you're doing you can do great things with the phone for example you can overclock the processor of the phone underclock it to get better battery life but if you don't know what you're doing you can also uh, make the phone unusable by breaking it. So be careful while routing your phone and also another thing that people don't understand many of the manufacturer for example if let's say if you install a custom ROM that's a different ROM from let's say uh, for example you're using Samsung phone and you install a custom ROM and you break the phone and the uh, phone is unusable if you take it back to Samsung most probably they'll deny it and they'll say that uh, this is not covered under warranty. So be careful about routing. It's a great thing. I would say that uh, before routing the phone, if you're new to it, read, read and reread because the procedure of routing is a little bit different for every model and you have to be very careful uh, uh, in the procedure that you do and you have to be really careful uh, by following the procedure exactly because there's a high chance if you don't follow it properly, you can break your phone. I'll uh, link to some of the articles. For example, you can follow XTA developers, Cyanogen Mahod, etc to uh, uh, know more about routing, read those things and if you are comfortable with that, 
go ahead and wrote it but again but again i would say it's not 100 percent foolproof and there is a small chance of things going wrong i hope this info helps the next question comes from gaurav advani and uh, he asked me hello sir i want to improve my laptop speed i currently have 4 gb of ram installed and i'm using a second generation i5 core processor i want to know uh, whether i should go for more ram or upgrade my processor what is the relationship between the cpu usage and ram what is more important a faster cpu or more ram uh, let me talk first about ram and cpu these both these things are important again first let me talk about ram think of ram as a container in your computer for example whatever program needs to be used your cpu will take that program and load it into the ram so if you do not have enough ram what will happen is these programs will be frequently being removed from here uh, from the memory and being uh, and they'll be constantly being loaded thus it slows down the process but again also having a lot of ram unnecessarily a high use uh, high ram for example let's say you have 16 gigs of ram that won't make your what do you say uh, 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 computer faster but it will help in multitasking for ex for example 4 gb of ram is more than enough for normal users but if you're a heavy user and you use heavy applications like photoshop 3d modeling application yes 4 gb of ram can be a limitation so i would say that first check the amount of ram usage on your laptop if it is close to about 3 3.5 gb i would say definitely uh, suggest that upgrade from 4 gb to 8 gb that will uh, uh, significantly uh, ease your system and your system will run a lot smoother because the computer do not does not have to swap out the application from the ram again and again but again uh, for raw computing uh, increase in the speed this will not help because and there you have to upgrade your cpu but the cheapest thing is upgrading cpu is not easy on the laptop so i would suggest that check your ram usage and if it's on the higher side upgrade and that will give you a significant boost i hope it this helps you uh the next question comes from srinaldo7 uh, and his question is my question is related to smart checking results of a one terabyte hard drive two days uh, before when uh, before windows started booting the computer started showing smart status uh, uh, check result that's bad status backup and replace uh yeah if you get this error i would say that rush to your computer uh, uh, rush, rush to your computer vendor shop get a spare hard drive and copy the data smart is an intelligent check on most of these modern hard drives and think of this as a security check where before booting and while your computer is running it checks the hard drive status these manufacturers have set uh, what do you say uh, parameters and the smart status checks if all these status for example your head spinning etc of your hard drive are within these parameters and if anything goes beyond this pa uh, parameters it gives you a smart error and i would say it's a great thing because before a, a catastrophic hardware failure most of the time smart can detect this and warn you and if you're getting this error i would definitely say that back up your data because there's a high chance that this hard drive might fail so smart is a great thing and if you're getting smart errors i would strongly suggest that you back up your data because this hard drive or whatever can fail anytime now i hope this answers your question and the next question comes from in the deep saying and it goes i have a question companies like carbon micromax Cellcon, etc provide great features at low price that brands like samsung sony lg etc provide at a higher price is it the matter of quality or just the brand name uh, again i would say that uh, yes cellcon micromax all these companies do provide all these android phones at a great price but again uh, i would say yes definitely the hardware quality is a little bit the components for example the quality of plastics glass etc is a little bit uh, low compared to these premium brands but that's not the problem the main issue i would say is the end user support for example these cellcon etc these run great but the problem i have seen and i have many of the users have mailed is that when you have a problem with these phones for example let's say the phone is running fine for about two three months and suddenly you have a problem the end user support and customer support is just not that great as compared to uh, what you say tar one companies like samsung htc sony etc so definitely you are paying much higher price for the sony air uh, htc etc but again you are paying for the, the after sale service etc and there 
again yes the cellcon uh, carbon etc are great for example uh, uh, my uh, sister in law uh, is using a carbon android phone and she's using it for the past 6 months it works great but when she bought, uh, purchased it i just tell told her yeah get it it will work great but if you have a problem just forget about it so that's the attitude i have with these phones so i hope this info helps our next question comes from rohan jain i uh, and it goes like sir i'm asking this question for the second time and i didn't get any uh, response uh, earlier what's the difference between amoled and retina display is it just about the ppi pixels or anything else yes it's just about the ppi i think so uh, apple introduced this retina display first in their iphones and according to apple a retina displays pixels are so jam packed for example the uh, first iphone that was iphone 4 it was introduced in that it had a ppi of 300 that means in an inch they had 300 dots and thus and because it's so jam packed the display appears to be so clear it looks like it's uh, on a printed text now most of these new uh, other manufacturers also for example samsung etc have started uh, having this retina displays uh, in for example uh, uh, samsung likes to have amoled screen and generally these amoled screens are much more vibrant and if you look at these amoled screens uh, the color uh, appear to be a lot punchier and color saturation is a lot more compared to other displays again it's not the true uh, accuracy of color and if you are a true purist you will not like the amulet display because the colors appear to be uh, what do you say unnatural and a lot more punchier but to just look at it amulet displays are great and yes amulet displays are also having retina displays for example the latest htc uh, what do you say butterfly has an insane ppi of over, of over 400 that's much higher than iphone so it's again a marketing gimmick yes a retina display is great but most of the high end phones these days are having a very excess ppi uh, for example most of these high end phones examples s3 etc are in the range of 300 ppi and we are seeing again new android phones that are coming in the market with 1080p uh, displays that have a ppi of over 400 so again again yes it's a marketing term and uh, apple introduced this retina display but now if you're buying a latest android high end phone most probably it is already a retina display i hope this answers your question the last question comes from honey thakur and it goes like these days some of the latest mobile phones are coming with with the glo and ss that's the russian navigation system along with the a gps so how much is the difference between the overall performance and uh, in respect device which are connected to a gps or glnos or only coming with G, uh, G, uh, gps Yes, this GLONOS, uh, what do you say, uh, navigation system, uh, GPS system is Russian and traditionally we have been using the AGPS, that was the American satellite and if I'm not wrong, the first uh, device that uh, had this GLONOS uh, support was the Note 1 and immediately when I used it, I noticed that uh, it could uh, lock to the GPS satellites a lot quicker compared to a phone that had only a GPS. So yes, I would say if you use the phone a lot for navigation, this GLONOS definitely helps because what I've noticed, it locks to the uh, GPS satellites a lot quicker and also the lock stays for a lot longer time. I did not scientifically measure, but uh, I would can definitely say that GLONOS helps. And again, if you're buying a new Android phone and you use the phone a lot for navigation, it is a good idea to check if it has this GLONOS, uh, what do you say, satellite support. I hope this answers your question. So these were some of the questions for this 23rd Q&A session. I hope you enjoyed them. And if you found them useful, I'll appreciate if you can click on the like button. If you would like that I answer some of your tech related questions in the next Q&A session, that's the 24th Q&A session, please submit them below in the YouTube comments and start it with the Q&A tag. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech and I hope to see you in my next video.